the Hyundai i20 N line it is the most powerful and the most dedicated performance oriented hot hatch that you can buy in the country well yes if you are in the mass market this is the car that you should buy if you are seeking outright thrills having said that it's not the first car to take that street there have been hot hatches before this in fact it has a rival that can still give it a run for its money so today in this video we are going to find out where the i20 n line stands amongst the past the original hot hatchback that was the Palio 1.6 and its current rival the Polo specifically the 1 liter TSI automatic so let me get this straight this is not a comparison test as you might think of course we have the Polo but the aim of this story is to see how the hot hatch in India has evolved over two decades You're watching the AutoX YouTube channel. You can also get your daily dose of all things automotive on our website, autox.com, and follow us on social media. Don't forget to check out our monthly magazine and make sure to hit the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. So, of course, you can't talk about hot hatches without mentioning the Palio 1.6. And the one I'm driving today, it's even more special. This is the S10 version. Only 500 units were made. And if you remember, this was the time when Sachin Tendulkar was the brand ambassador for Fiat in India. So this was made, of course, to pay tribute to the Master Blaster. And only 500 units were made. And this is a 96th car of that batch. So this, is, this has this plaque uh, on the left door, which says S96. And it belongs to a friend who is a Fiat enthusiast. Now, speaking of Fiat enthusiasts, uh, in fact, I also used to own one of these 1.6 engines. I had the later version, which was the 2007 version, uh, which was the Palio 1.6 style. Same engine, it was a bit soft compared to this car, but that's not the point because this car, it is something else. I spent nearly four years with this car. I, I bought it used and uh, the engine, I still don't find that kind of performance in all the modern cars. Today, I've been driving the uh, i20 N line, the Polo 1 liter TSI, of course turbo engines, they have a lot of grunt, but this 1.6 liter naturally aspirated unit, it produces 100 bhp and the way it picks up speed is phenomenal. I mean, this is what all lumpy engines are all about. The torque, it's, it's just phenomenal. The way it revs. The induction noise. I mean, everything about this car, it, it it's just so emotional so uh, of course this was a hot hatch at the time and this is the s10 version so it came with uh, even lower springs and uh, the gearbox also it had uh, shorter ratios so that means when you're driving it like this you're going to get a lot of performance a lot of uh, fun and now the best part about this engine is the way it revs and uh, there is virtually performance all the way till the red line which is around 6800 rpm and it sings and dances along as you rev this motor. So for me, this actually, this car, it, it is the benchmark in terms of engine performance. And whether you talk about ride and handling as well, this is a car that was launched in 2002, but still today it can put cars, modern cars to shame. The ride quality is simply phenomenal. The handling is simply epic. And uh, this car comes with a hydraulic unit and it's dripping with feel. So for me, it has always been the benchmark and every time a new car comes, every time a hot hatch comes, this is the yardstick. So uh, for me, this car will always be the trendsetter. This is the car that started it all, not only for me, but for a lot of petrol heads. And uh, in that regard, I think it's just phenomenal. But of course, this doesn't mean that it's uh, flawless. This car, in fact, had a lot of flaws. First of all, uh, there was virtually no after-sales service. Fiat's uh, after-sales was simply non-existent. Plus, it used to drink fuel like anything. And uh, I spent, like I said, three years with this car. And I thought it was a money pit because not only in terms of fuel efficiency, there were no replacement parts. And you really had to put in a lot of effort to get this car going. So for me, uh, even when it was standing still, it was costing you money. And that is the deal breaker 
with this car because it was a great car it was way ahead of its time but the problem was there was no support and for me a hot hatch it has to be practical you should be able to drive it every day and if you can't drive it every day well that defeats the purpose so for me that was the deal breaker with the palio and then that's why i parted ways with this car because of course it was a great car but you drive it in traffic it used to heat up like crazy and there were so many faults in the sense you know there were virtually many flaws with this car ultimately it was a great car it still is a great car uh, but it had its flaws while the palio was a legend i think it was the polo that started the trend of hot hatchbacks in india because this was when it was launched in 2010 well this of course took the game forward in terms of quality in terms of ride and handling this was the first time that we are getting a proper european car with that solid build quality and of course european dynamics so in typical volkswagen fashion well this car was brimming with all the latest tech so uh, in 2010 well of course uh, it was offered with a 1.6 engine i think only a few of you will remember it used to come with 1.2 liter which was a weak engine and uh, the 1.6 was the actual deal uh, used to come with the vento at that time naturally aspirated 1.6 but it didn't really pick up in 2013 uh, this car got a 1.2 liter tsi engine with a dsg gearbox now that was the first time that you had a budget hatchback with all the tech from cars way above its segment tsi technology direct injection engine and a 7 speed dual clutch automatic transmission well that obviously transformed polo into a hot hatch and to date it's been 10 years but the polo gt tsi well it's still a driver's car now uh, the thing is uh, of course the 1.2 tsi was a brilliant brilliant car in terms of dynamics in terms of uh, road holding and the way it went around corners it was also quite exciting plus like i said at that time it was the most advanced car now volkswagen has changed the polo as in the underpinnings are still the same but uh, this has an all new 1 liter tsi engine which is a three cylinder engine it develops more power than the four cylinder engine though and uh, more torque as well plus the biggest thing is it now comes with a six speed torque converter so the dsg gearbox is now gone but overall this is a quicker car than the uh, dcd version than the original gt tsi 1.2 So uh, how did that happen? Well, uh, this engine, uh, of course, it comes with a new cylinder head and it has a DOHC setup, dual overhead camshaft instead of the single overhead camshaft uh, setup of the GT DSI. And this engine, you can definitely feel it's so much better than not just the old 1.2, but of all the engines here, including the i20 N lines. The Palio had a naturally aspirated engine, but this is the car. that makes turbo so desirable the way it picks up it has great low end performance uh, the automatic gearbox complements it really well and most importantly the way it revs uh, in the mid range well this is just phenomenal the kind of grunt you get you don't get that sort of grunt in the i20 n line apart from that it's based on the same platform like the old polo so that means you have a solid ride and handling uh, balance this car it feels just as good as uh, the old days so in terms of ride and handling but well, i think the polo is still a great car having said that it of course feels its age because this is a 10 year old car and the plastics the design it does feel dated uh, now apart from that of course it's not as modern as the i20 and uh, you do feel that you know you're sitting in an old car there is performance there is everything so if you don't care about anything else in life you just care about the engine performance where well, i think the polo is still a great car but at the same time i list out some negatives which don't work for me first and foremost the steering uh, of course it's great uh, it has a lot of weight straight line stability is really good and uh, you do feel it it weighs up very nicely very progressively but it doesn't have the feel and feedback of uh, the i20 it just doesn't have that secondly uh, the suspension it's great but again it is a bit of compromise it's not a hot hatch in the true sense this is your everyday car and folks are going to tune the suspension for that it's not made for corner carving of course you can throw it around corners but you'll see that when you push it hard it understeers and the body roll is quite pronounced whereas in the i20 n line well it corners just flat 
So uh, that's one area uh, where the Polo is not up to the mark in comparison to the i20 inline or even the Palio in fact. The Palio S10 also is quite good in, in terms of feedback, in terms of how it goes around corners. So if you're looking for a hot hatch that really handles, well uh, the Polo is not it. Of course you have a lot of options, you can customize it, you can modify it but then it, it's not going to be the same. With Hyundai, you are getting everything as company fitted, so your warranty is not going to be void. And uh, that's the beauty of that car. Now, other thing about this car is the engine. Of course, it uh, revs freely, but it does feel a little thummy and there is a lot of noise right now. I'm on the same bit of road and I just drove the i20 on these roads itself. The i20 doesn't feel as noisy. The refinement levels of that car, well, they are simply brilliant. So, uh, in that aspect also, I don't think it matches the i20. And then, uh, in terms of space and comfort, uh, it is a little cramped. This is the same car that was launched in 2010. So, uh, in terms of space, in terms of practicality, again, it's not there. It's not comparable to the i20 N-Line. Now, some people are not happy with the demise of the 1.27 speed DSG. But I think given what's on offer with this one, well, it feels every bit as quick. It's quicker actually than the DSG gearbox. And because it comes in the torque converter, you won't have any reliability issues, which were a major issue uh, with the 1.2 TSI. Of course, the four cylinder engine was more refined, uh, but uh, I think this car in the long run, it's not going to give you troubles like the DQ200 gearbox of uh, the DSG. So in that regard, I think uh, you can trust this car more. It's going to be more reliable. But in terms of drivetrain, I think it is definitely better than the i20s. It is short on par, but when you drive it, this feels more sprightly. The way it picks up, the mid-range, everything. I think this is a better car in that regard. So when I sold my Palio, the car that I wanted to upgrade to was of course the Polo because I thought it was a great car in terms of dynamic abilities, it felt modern, it had everything. But for me, uh, what uh, discouraged me from buying it is of course uh, its reliability issues with the TSI engine and then at the same time uh, the Punto Abarth was also going to come out and that was a phenomenal car as well. In fact, we wanted to feature it in this story and we had the car arranged as well but there was a last minute change so that couldn't turn up. So that is also one of the cars that goes under the radar. Uh, not many people know about it or not many people bought it because of same Fiat issues. But uh, that was a kick-ass car. It had the most power. It was 145 bhp and uh, of course it used to ride and handle beautifully. So the N-Line, well, uh, on the face of it, of course, it doesn't have a lot of power and uh, the changes are not that much. But when you drive this car, well, this definitely feels 2021. In the sense, uh, I've just driven the Palio, I've just been in the Polo as well. But this one definitely feels the most focused. And I'll tell you how, because uh, this is not a hatchback with a powerful engine. That was the case with the Palio and that was the case with the Polo as well. The Polo, in fact, uh, has a lot of power and I think in terms of engine and gearbox, the Polo is still superior. But on every other front, well, the i20 N-Line feels like a proper driver's car. And I'll tell you one by one. So, uh, first of all, as soon as you sit in the car, you get a racier feel because the seats are more comfortable, the seats have more support. Uh, and then the way you sit in the car, it's quite sporty, it's quite low as well. Secondly, the steering, this is the N-Line steering and it's not just a cosmetic thing because the moment you throw this car around corners, it just has a lot of feel and feedback. This has completely transformed the i20. The new i20, it is a great car, but the steering still felt a little dead in center, but this one, it just feels so rock solid. Whether you're doing high triple digit speeds, whether you're around a corner, this is dripping with feel. So I think this is the biggest addition I, I feel for me, I need a car that connects to me. That was the case with the Palio as well. It had a uh, hydraulic steering and I love that car for that. So this one has similar feedback. It's an, of course, electric steering, but the feedback it has, it's just phenomenal. The other thing is, uh, is of course the suspension. The springs are now 30% stiffer and you can feel it. It corners flat. There is not a lot of understeer. In fact, it feels planted everywhere. So the control you have, 
on this car well you're not going to get it in the polo or even in the palio so the thing is that in that regard this is leaps and bounds ahead of those two and this is what i love about this car because see most of the cars they had powerful engines they had everything but they never felt as tied down as this car so for me dynamically well this is a hot hatchback it, it's not warm in that regard well it is actually a hot hatch of course the ride quality is not going to be that good uh, it is stiff and uh, i'm on the highway now and when you go over expansion joints you can feel it especially if you're at the back you're going to feel it more but overall it is a complete package and for me of course people say that you know it, it needs more power it needs to be more aggressive but for me this is the car that i like to drive every day this is the car that i'll enjoy my personal grudge with the palio was it was a hot hatch but i couldn't take it everywhere this car you can drive it daily you can have fun with it it's not that bad it's not that uncomfortable it is a lot more spacious it's practical it has all the kit that you'll ever need so in that regard well this is a complete package this is what a hot hatch should be although having said that of course i do have a couple of complaints uh, starting with the engine uh, actually the engine is nice it's a 1 liter uh, three cylinder engine produces 118 bhp 172 newton meters of torque so it has grunt it has a lot of grunt but uh, it has a little bit of lag below 2000 rpm and that's pronounced because of the gearbox so uh, the dct it doesn't feel like a dct it feels like a torque converter yeah the dct uh, in the polo well it's superior any day but uh, this gearbox uh, of course uh, there's a lot of lag and i think uh, the gear ratio especially third and fourth gears they are a little tall so if you are in the city and you're caught behind a car you want to do a quick overtake you'll see the transmission it doesn't downshift there is lag from the motor and you're going to hate it so uh, that's my only grouse with this engine but of course you don't have to rely on the gearbox because you get these nice paddle shifters and they are quite responsive of course they are also on a bit of a conservative side so i don't think hyundai has done any change in the mapping uh, of this car in terms of power delivery or the gearbox uh, response so it feels a little too standard so i would have liked something you know with with snappier responses because this car definitely deserves it but uh, having said that uh, it's only when you compare it with the polo because polo's transmission and the engine well that combination is a little better in every respect uh, i also think the polo's engine uh, revs a little more freely this of course it revs but uh, at the high reaches it is a little loud it it starts protesting it feels like a, a three cylinder engine but overall uh, not a deal breaker i'd say yeah the only problem with this car is that there is no manual transmission and that is a big miss i think because this is a car that genuinely deserves a manual gearbox you have the imt we don't have a clutch so you are not going to love that the imt is a good transmission but i think of course it is a compromise in terms of driver involvement so uh, that's the only thing missing in this car but on every other front well i think it's a job well done and uh, I can tell you I have never been a fan of Hyundai cars in in the sense that you know I come from a Palio so uh, I have always had that image that that car was the benchmark the performance the engine and everything but this I think this is a great package I just wish Hyundai had offered it with a manual gearbox but for the time being even uh, a DCT gearbox works for me Another thing I don't really understand is the exhaust uh, so when you're driving uh, you can't really hear it because there is absolutely no noise from the exhaust so you think it's a waste of money or you think it's a waste of an effort but of course when you're outside or when you're sitting at the back seat you can hear it popping a bit so it's for basically onlookers it's it's not for you you don't really hear the exhaust inside so i wish it could have been louder So the big question is should you buy this is it a hot hatch well of course for middle class buyers who are looking for driving thrills who are out there for a fun car on a budget well i think this has everything trust me this car if we don't believe the trolls on the internet they'll tell you this is nothing but you go out drive this car and you can feel it the kind of chassis it has the how it feels how responsive it feels everywhere the way it is to drive how involving it is to drive it's nothing like on the market this is 
a proper car. One more thing, yeah, the quality is not that great. I think the quality has gone down a bit on this car in the i20 in general. But overall, you think about it, this has everything. This has space, this is practicality, this has all the modern gizmos. Yes, the Polo 1 liter TSI is still a great car. But my problem with the Polo is that, first of all, it doesn't drive or handle like this thing. Uh, of course, it has a superior engine, but my problem, my main problem with the Polo is that it's an old car. Whatever you say, at the end of the day, it's a 10 year old car. And uh, it is a mental barrier for me because I, I want to have all these luxuries as well. If I'm going to drive this car every day, I want a car that has everything. And in that regard, I think Hyundai has done a phenomenal job. This is a car for the enthusiast. Finally, you're going to get a car that can excite you. So overall, yes, it is a big thumbs up. I think I enjoy driving this car. And uh, yeah, if it had a manual transmission, would have been better. But uh, with the DCT, well, I think it's not a bad deal. So overall, I think this is really the modern day hot hatch. And probably in the future, once you have electric cars coming in, this will be remembered like the Palio 1.6 because this is probably the last time we are going to see a hot hatch. At the same time, I also wish and hope that Hyundai also brings the N car, the actual N car, which comes with 1.6 engine. And I can only imagine how good that car be because this, I think it's not a proper N car still, but imagine 1.6 engine and uh, proper suspension, proper tuning. Well, that car is going to be something. So overall for me, I think it's a refreshing change because Hyundai for me, they've never been the driver's car, but this is where well, they've turned things around and how.